By the Unum Pedlek, it would be wiser to simply fire you and use your face to make squid biscuits. Oh, Swazdola. How may hook serve? He really is useless. That money in your sock pet like is for bail. Swazdola, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, so anyway, this is Rhythm Man, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Zaws. I've heard, I've seen a lot of comments about the Zaws and how useless they are. And uh, I, I don't quite think that's true, but then again, there's not much known about the Zaws, so it's impossible really right now to know how great they are. But what I can do is walk you through how to forge a Zaw and what to look out for when trying to build the stats of Zaw. So you wanna, you're gonna wanna talk to Hop, who's this guy here. Uh, you can find him on your map. He's gonna be an anvil on your map. But basically, you can. Uh, the easiest thing today. to do. Hawk knows you're interested. Is to go to his special and just purchase one here for 95. It depends on how good the weapon is. They come at varying um, stats, and they. They say it's a discount, but he's the only one that sells them, so discounted based off of what, I don't know. But you can just buy one straight out with the catalyst and everything like this. Uh, and that's your easiest way to get a Zaw. It won't be yours specifically that you made from blood, sweat, and tears, but it'll be a Zaw. It'll give you a decent idea of what you can expect. Another thing you could do is uh, not purchase a Zaw. And just look at the different parts and see how those parts basically uh, amount to the stats you get. So as you can see, you have an Uthla Strike, a Quaif Grip, and a Vargit Jai uh, Counterweight. And that basically amounts to these stats here. You can see that this weapon has kind of a medium range uh, damage, but a pretty decent critical chance. So something about these parts. Uh, gives us a crit weapon with actually some status chance too. So we're gonna go uh, look at the parts individually. So if you want to look at individual parts, you can go to browse wares. From here, you can see all the different parts that are available. Now, uh, this is still in beta, I think, because even as recently as today, uh, DE has made some changes. Uh, a couple of days ago, they changed it so that all of these grips and uh, strikes are available from the first uh, first tier, which is different. But it makes sense because the assumption is that the grip and the strike doesn't necessarily choose how much damage the weapon does. It just selects the type of damage it does. So there's no reason to lock it behind uh, Austron Ring. Uh, but what is locked behind Ostron rank and higher Ostron rank are the counterweights. And so it can be based off of the way the strategy that they're using to price these things. It seems like the counterweight is where most of the damage is coming from. And that could explain some of the weak weapons uh, that have been coming out lately. A lot of people have been showcasing just how horrible the Zaws are. But if you're using like these counterweights, then... Probably the stats are going to be great. You're probably not going to get decent stats until you get to the higher counterweight levels. So let's go through what all the parts do. So when trying to design your weapon, the first thing you're going to want to look at is the strike. The strike determines what type of damage is done. And while it's not readily apparent, it doesn't show you the stats you could get an idea of what type of damage is done just by looking at the strike. So this is the strike that I used in my first weapon and you could tell from basically the shape of it that it does sort of blunt force trauma and not surprisingly the main damage type of this type of strike is impact. Uh, if you wanted more of a slash type I would assume you would want to go for something like this although I haven't tested it out personally based off what I've seen, 
uh, you're gonna get more slash if you use a weapon like that or something like this will have more of a puncture type uh, damage so you're gonna want to choose the type of damage you want based off of the characteristics of the strike now the next part is the grip which are these here and all these grips they basically tell you in the description what they do it basically determines the type of weapon it is so using a grip like this will create a staff or a polearm type weapon using a grip like this again will make a staff or polearm type weapon and you can see that this one is a little lighter weight so that you'll get less damage with this but they both make similar type of weapon uh, this type of grip is going to be used for your swords and machetes and it has a heavy weight on it so it's going to do a little bit more damage but be a little slower and actually um, this is the grip that I use on my weapon uh, mixing with this kind of strike and then last but not least is the counterweights and that's where it gets a little more tricky so counterweights are basically decorations on the weapon that also determine the type of stats it has so let's take a Ruhang is that correct? Ruhang? Ruhang? let's take this counterweight for example as you can see it increases damage at the cost of speed so a weapon that has this attachment is going to deal a little more damage but be a little slower Jai blueprints are for counterweights that actually increase speed but cost damage so there's a little bit of a balance mechanic to it but these are really low rank uh, and I wouldn't use these if you're a veteran if I were you I'd wait until you could get to the higher rank ones and here you can see a Ruhang 2 and Dai 2 and basically these do the same thing increasing damage at the cost of speed or vice versa and the two behind it basically means that um, it's going to be stronger but it's going to have a higher downside so let's take this for example Ruhang 2 is going to be stronger than a Ruhang 1 weapon but it's also going to be slower than a Ruhang 1 weapon so these are probably going to be more appealing because if you're building a weapon you're going to build for a strength and you're going to sort of compensate for its weakness so being a little bit more on the extreme side rather than in the middle might be a little bit better in terms of mining. And then you get into the combination counterweights. Uh, as you can see this is the Vargit Ruhan. And so Ruhan here tells you that this is going to increase damage. And the Vargit side of it actually increases the critical chance. So if you want to make a crit based weapon you're going to want to use something like this. Whereas an Iguana is going to increase your status chance instead. So you have Vargit Ruhang and Iguana Ruhang. Both of them increase damage. But this one increases critical and this one increases status. And then you have the combination. Same two, but with Jai instead. These are going to have faster speed with higher critical chance or status. So this is going to basically determine whether you're making a uh, condition overload build or a blood rush uh, body uh, count build but it gets even deeper from there uh, at this level you can actually and this is the level of the weapon that I made I actually chose the Iguana 2 Ruhang blueprint and this weapon is going to have a moderately higher uh, damage but it's going to have a lot higher status so it's going to make it a lot a lot more viable as a status build weapon this is going to be a weapon that I'm going to eventually turn into a condition overload weapon. But if I was the type of person who favored critical chance, then I might actually choose this one instead, Vargit Jai or a Vargit uh, Ruhan, depending on whether I want speed or if I want extra damage. These weapons are going to be a lot stronger than what you get at the beginning here. And I haven't unlocked the highest levels yet. But at the highest levels, you have the Iguana Jai 2 and the Vargi Wuhan 2. But basically what that tells us is this is going to deal more damage. The damage is going to be higher on this than what's on my weapon. But actually, let's use this as an example. As opposed to the Iguana 2 Wuhan blueprint, which is going to be a lot more status and a little more damage. This is going to be a little different. It's going to be a lot more damage. But a little bit more stats 
And so depending on the type of weapon, this is where you kind of sort of fine tune the weapon. Whether you want to focus more on damage or more on status, but you still want a combination of both. And then last but not least is the arcane. And the arcane is once you reach the level of arcanes, that's when you truly make the weapon yours. You can give it special abilities like increasing the energy rate on your channel ability. Uh, because that's something that people like. They like channeling builds, right? I'm joking. And then finishers have a chance to grant life steal. You could create a weapon that basically gives you life steal. So let's say you're using a dagger. You're making a dagger that has really high speed and covert lethality on it. This might be something you want to add to it because each backstab is going to give you a little health. That's your unique weapon that's going to have all those unique characteristics and traits. But you could build a slow dagger with high damage. Or you could build a dagger with high critical chance. I don't think there's anything like that in the game right now. So really, what makes this system shine is the level of customizability. I don't think any of these weapons are going to be the best weapon in the game. But they're going to be yours. And they're going to have the stats that you find most important in the weapon. One thing I forgot to mention is that despite having a collection of items in the shop behind him, when you purchase items from him, it's actually the blueprint and not the item itself. So you have to go back to your ship and craft the part and then bring it back to him so he can put it back together. Which is kind of dumb, but eh, video game logic. And this is the Zal that I created. It has that strike that I was talking about earlier, but because I use this grip, it's a machete type weapon. It's also a heavy grip, so it deals more damage than just your average machete. And the uh, counterweights that I put on here makes it a better, a better status weapon as opposed to critical weapon. And you can see that here. This is the, look at the base stats actually. This is not the base stats. Here we go. So the base stats here are 51 and 22, impact and slash, just like I said, it's a blunt force weapon. And the status chance on it is a 22, which is not the best, but it's pretty decent compared to uh, the machete that I currently am using, the gazelle machete. As you can see here, it has slightly less status chance but it does actually more damage than uh, than the machete that I normally use. And I tear stuff up with this machete. So I'm hoping that this new machete that I make is going to be comparable or at least uh, better than the gazelle machete. Now it is a little slower than the gazelle machete. And a critical chance is just horrible. There's like no critical chance. But I mainly focus on the status when I build the board. So I think this is going to turn out pretty decent. As you can see, there are no polarities on this weapon except for the stance. Uh, but other than that, there's no polarities on this weapon. And uh, I can't add Forma to it because it's ungilded. I have to guild it first before I can add polarity or, or uh, at my capacity too. And so in order to guild it, you have to go back to Hawk. And go to other services and select guild. Now there's one problem with this guilding is that it costs you standing. 5,000 standing and I don't have enough. And it also costs two Cetus Wisps, which I have more than enough. But currently, uh, I've reached my max, my daily limit on standing. So I'm not going to be able to guild it today. So that's basically the end of this video. However, in part two, we're going to talk about how guilding a weapon changes its stats and makes it a lot more powerful, bringing it closer to the level of what you would see in like the game, the, the weapons that are in game now, the in game before this update. Um, and we'll talk about how you can further customize your weapons by building it. But until then, thanks for watching.